Kira, and you're watching Polymer Clay TV. Today I want to talk a little bit about finishing, how to make your work look finished. Because a lot of times we notice that crafters, artists, and hobbyists, they will think that a piece is finished, and just one more little step can make it look so much better. So I have two pieces here, and these are, these are done as far as the clay is concerned. They're baked. They're finished. This one is a little um, pendant. It's a jewelry piece. It has hanging loops in it. It's got a little rhinestone crystal. There are some mica powder highlighting some of the design. And then this is a bottle that was covered with a silk screened piece. We've got some hot fix cabs on there. And it's an olive oil bottle. So we sculpted some vines from the olive tree kind of grows like a collection of vines that twists up out of the ground. It's pretty cool looking. And olives have long leaves and of course the fruits. So this is the half of the bottle that I would say is not finished. So basically I put down the silk screened piece and put the vines over it to kind of hold everything onto the bottle. And then lastly came the fruits and leaves and some ink to highlight areas make it look a little bit more realistic. And it's nice looking, but if we flip to the other side that has been finished, I would call this much more detailed and realistic looking and more finished. So these three pieces here have been antiqued. And antiquing is one of those last step things that can take your piece from looking sort of amateur to totally cohesive and finished and unified. So what it does is it brings some detail into the cracks and crevices. See it highlighted these little dots that I made to um, to show the end of the olive. It highlights and, and deepens the shape of the leaf and it gives some definition to make things look round by giving them shadows. And on the um, the bottle sides here, I was feeling like maybe this is a little bit too bright. So by leaving some paint over this uh, green part, it actually kind of brings it all together. So my favorite color to do this with is raw umber. Some people also like burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is a warmer brown, so it just depends on what you know what you prefer. I prefer the raw umber to me it's more um, it's a cooler color so it kind of looks more shadowy to me and this is so simple to do guys all you need is your paint and a nice stiff brush I have two shapes here one is a little thinner and one is more rounded um, I usually stick to this one and then you need something to wipe off the paint with so you can use this is a scrap of fabric like t-shirt fabric. You can use paper towels. My favorite thing is I go to the home store and I buy a box of shop rags. These are non-woven shop rags. So it's really hard. They don't, it's hard to uh, get lint, like lint doesn't come off of these. And it's also not going to sort of disintegrate like a wet paper towel would. So I prefer these. But I also did get this is also shop rags. So this is cotton shop rags, and then this is the non-woven paper type. Um, the advantage of either or, these you can wash in the washing machine. Of course, once they're filled with acrylic paint, then you end up throwing them out. Um, so I kind of switched to these because it's biodegradable. And I don't love paper towels just because a lot of times when you get them wet, they'll start to disintegrate and you'll have to kind of pick the fibers out of your piece. So I also keep a spray bottle of water. I actually have three on my desk. One is alcohol, one is water, and one is acetone. So um, sometimes I'll clean my metal tools and my um, glass surfaces with acetone. And then of course water is always useful. And alcohol is for cleaning up inks and stuff. So that's a little tip for you. 
So I keep this water in case I need it, but mostly you can do all of this with just your paint and a paper towel or shop rag or something. So I'll show you how to do it on the little bird. And you just put a blob of paint and then you use your brush to scrub this paint into all the cracks and crevices of the piece. You wanna do this quickly so that the paint doesn't dry. And the reason I like a stiff brush is so that that paint really does get down into all of the areas. Especially if you've done texturing, because then it gets into the textures. So then you just take your rag and wipe off the paint from the surface of the design. And you just leave it, leave it in the cracks, leave it down in the spaces, leave it around the edges of things. If you have a really pretty manicure, you might want to wear gloves because you're going to get paint all over your fingers. But basically that's it. Now if you feel like you have too much paint on one area or another, you can wet your paper towel and go back. If you feel like you didn't get enough paint in a certain area, like I didn't get enough down between the tail feathers here, then you can go back, of course, and add more. And just keep going back and forth until you like how it looks. It's really very simple, but I think that now that all the cracks and crevices and shadows have been shown off on this little bird that it looks much more finished, much more done than it did before. So the same thing holds true on my bottle. And I would just paint these areas, make sure that the paint gets down in that crack of the olive, and then just rub it off the top surfaces. And it's kind of a back and forth thing until everything looks how you want it to look. If you took too much off, you can always add more. If you didn't get enough, you can go back, of course, and add paint. If you feel like you added too much paint and it's too dark, like I said, wet the paper towel and go in there and take some out. But it's a pretty fast process. Using this deeper color of paint will do, especially since I've got a lot of brown here, is it's bringing these really bright clay colors back down to nature. So if you see here, these were pretty bright olives. And when I paint over them, it's gonna leave just a little film of that darker paint over the olives themselves. Which actually kind of, to me, since this is a nature-based piece, it definitely makes them look a little bit more natural by toning them down a bit. And then it makes everything look more real just by giving things darker edges and shadows that you can really see. So I hope that that is helpful to you in a first step in making something look like it's finished and ready instead of kind of looking like it should have had one more little thing. A lot of times in Polymer Clay Tribe, which is our Facebook group, um, people will say, you know, I, I want to sell my work. I feel like there's something missing and this is it. This is like the magic. Um, let me show you a piece that I have up here on my desk and try to 
bring home what this does for a bigger art piece. So at a retreat that Elisa and I hosted, we had the artist Lisa Runner come and do a class. And this was the class. It was making this little pen pot. And we molded our face and we added clay and did all kinds of fun things to it. But the one of the steps to finish it was to antique it with a dark paint. And imagine what she would have looked like if I hadn't done this. I actually stamped a little starfish tattoo, which you wouldn't have been able to see because it was a very faint little dots. And it puts that detail into the cracks of her lips and mouth and makes you really see the nose holes and all the detail around the eyes and around the edges of the face too. So antiquing really is an awesome final step. So I hope that you can take a little of that into your next piece and that you'll come back and see us next week on Polymer Clay TV. Mm -hmm.